left behind, but we're not staying here. We're going to rise. Whoo! <laughs> I feel victory. I don't only feel victory, I've got victory. Amen. I have no time for the devil. I want to lift him up. He's worthy. Amen. The ushers, please come. We're going to receive our offering. I want you to give us unto the Lord. Amen. We've had a lot of rain today, haven't we? But I thank God for the rain. We'll need it in the summertime when the ground's cracked. It's hot. We'll be glad for the rain. We're glad for what God gives. He's been good to us. I said God's been good to us. We ought to be grateful. Thank you, Jesus, for this opportunity one more time to be in the house of God. Thank you for the precious people that have come here tonight. Oh, the Messiah. We're so glad that we could come to the house of the Lord. The freedom to worship you. A freedom in a nation. The blessings of God that's upon us. And now bless this offering. Multiply it. And give us a great service as we remain here and worship you tonight. And we'll praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. us tonight. Amen. Sister Pryor is coming to sing. Worship God as she comes. Amen.
Praise the Lord. The young people can go at this time. Amen. Don't everybody leave. Praise the Lord. You may be 80 and think you're young. <laughs> young people can go at this time. Amen. Everybody stand, if you will, please. It's so good to see you in the Lord's house again. And God is blessing. Next Wednesday night, the Lord Willem will be in prayer conference in the Lincolnton Church of God. The choir will be singing. Be praying about that. I want our church to be an example. I want us to be doing what God would have us to do. Hallelujah. Just shake somebody's hand and say, I'm really glad I came and I got here okay. Amen. Turn in your Bibles to the book of Hebrews chapter 12 and I want to read verses 14 through 18. Hebrews chapter 12 verses 14 through 17 I believe it is. 14 through 17 excuse me. Heavenly Father we thank you again for this opportunity to be in your house. We thank you for the wonderful people that have come here to worship God tonight. We pray the hand of God upon me. Bless those that are watching the internet. If anybody's lost, let them find Christ. If anybody's close to backsliding, let them turn back again to you. And heal the sick and deliver with your presence and power. And we'll praise you for all you do in Jesus' name. Amen. And everybody said praise the Lord. In Hebrews chapter 12 and verses 14 through 17. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness spring up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing. He was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. I want to minister tonight on a subject, the downfall of Esau. The downfall of Esau. You can be seated, if you will, at this time. God was just getting started in the Word of God in Genesis, his program as God with humanity in these early verses as he dealt with humanity. God was establishing his name in the earth and he called Abraham out of Ur the Chaldeans. Then Isaac was born with a supernatural birth by Sarah and then of course we have Esau and Jacob born unto Isaac. They were twins. And Isaac was 40 years old and he took Rebekah to be his wife. 40 years old and they couldn't have any children. 20 years passed by because later on in the book of Genesis, we read about this, how 20 years had passed by before Jacob and Esau were born. Isaac prayed unto the Lord and Rebekah conceived and there were twins in her womb. And she said, if it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. And the Lord let her know that Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy womb. The one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elders shall serve the younger. Well, they were born, and they were twins. Esau was born first, and then Jacob was born. When Jacob was born, he caught hold of Esau's heel. And so... They were both born. Esau was a hunter. He was a man of the field and Jacob was just a plain man dwelling in tents. And the Bible tells us that Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his venison. But Rebekah loved Jacob. Well, Isaac had become old and he was going to give his inheritance unto Esau, but Esau wasn't worthy. Because Esau went out in the field to hunt and he came back one day and he saw Jacob and Jacob was making pottage or soup, if you please, of lentils. And Esau was hungry and he said, I want some of that pottage. And Jacob said, okay, you can have it, but sell me your birthright. 
He said, I'm at the point to die, and what good is this birthright going to do unto me? So Jacob said, swear unto me, and he swore unto him and sold his birthright. The Bible said that Jacob gave him bread and pottage of lentils, and he did eat, and he rose up and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright, according to the scripture. So he didn't honor the birthright, but he had a right to it. He was the firstborn. But now God's going to try Esau, and God tries us. Esau is one of the most pathetic characters or individuals among God's word that we read about because he had everything within his grasp. Everything was right in line with this man Esau. But remember, it said the elder shall serve the younger. The one people shall be stronger than the other people. Two nations are in thy womb. Those two twins represented two nations that are going to come out of Israel down through history. So we're here, and as Esau comes, he did not honor his birthright. Esau had a great downfall. But as he was getting older, 20 years, as I've told you, had passed. That's a long time. They prayed for a child, and they had twins. But I don't know when they were born, but it was 20 years. That's a long time to trust. That's a long time to pray. They must not have given up. Isaac knew God had given a promise to his father. He was 40 years old when he took Rebekah, 60 years old when Esau and Jacob were born. So, Isaac gets old and his eyes are dim and he's about to die. And he calls in Esau and he tells him to go out in the field and I want you to hunt some venison. For me, that's deer. Bring it in and make savory meat for me as much as I love because I want to bless you. I want to put the double portion upon you because you're the elder before I die. Well, that excited Esau. But remember... Esau's already had this encounter with Jacob. God later on in the word of God said, Jacob have I loved and Esau have I hated. It didn't work out the way Esau thought it was going to work out. But he went to get that deer, that venison. Oh, he's happy now. He's excited. He has a right. He's an heir to this blessing. So he goes out to get this venison to hunt it and Rebekah overheard the conversation between Esau and Isaac and she called Jacob in and said, I want you to go and get two young goats of the kids and kids of the goats and bring them to me and I'm going to make savory meat and you're going to take it to your father and he's going to bless you before he dies. Jacob said, oh no, I can't do that. He felt bad about it at the time and he suffered down through life because he was a supplanter, he was a deceiver but remember, God had already said what's going to happen. He had already written history in advance. It's going to happen. The elder's going to serve the younger. So Jacob says, I'll be a deceiver. Said Esau's a hairy man, and I'm, I'm just a plain. I'm not like him. And, and my father will feel to me, and I'll be a deceiver, and I'll bring a curse upon myself. Rebecca said, let your curse be upon me, but you just do exactly what I've told you to do. You get those kids of the goats and bring them. I'm going to make that savory meat and you go in and do what I said. And there was a garment in the house that Esau wore. Now notice Esau's not around. He doesn't know what's going on. But he's already failed. He's already missed the mark. He's already sold out. But he's excited. He thinks it's going to be okay. But you better do more than think. You better be sure of your salvation. You better be sure of God because we're living in the last days and the trumpet could sound any time. You better do more than think. You better have a prayer life. You better study the word. Be faithful to the house of God and do what God said because you're going to have to give an account and if you're not faithful, you're not going in the rapture. So Esau's hunting and Jacob is going to get his blessing. Jacob tells three lies to Isaac in this occasion. He comes in with that savory meat or that deer and he pretends to be Esau. 
He says, here I am, my father. Who are you? I'm your firstborn Esau. So Isaac is lied to. And he said, I'm here. I've got the venison. I'm here for you to eat, to bless me. He says, well, how did you find it so quick? Line number two. He said, God gave it to me. Then he said, come and let me feel of you. And I'll know, says he feels of him. And Rebecca has put the skins of the goats upon his hands and upon the smooth of his neck. So he's hairy. He's got the skin there. And Esau feels of Jacob and said, it's Jacob's voice, but it feels like Esau. And the Bible said he did not discern him. He said again to Jacob, are you my very son Esau? He said, I am. Then he said, bring the venison I'm going to eat and said, I'm going to bless you. And he brought it near to him and he eat. And the Bible said he, he drank wine and he began to see Jacob and think it's Esau. And now he's going to pronounce the blessing upon him. He says, come near, I want to kiss you. And he takes hold of him thinking it's Esau all the time and he kisses him and he says, your raiment smells like the field that the Lord has blessed. Therefore, God, give thee the dew of heaven and fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine. Let people serve thee. Let nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over your brethren. Let your mother's brothers bow down to you. Cursed is everyone that curses you and blessed is everyone that blesses you. Esau is gone and Jacob is getting the blessing. So Jacob leaves. He's not discerned. He's happy. What would he have done if he would have been caught? What would he have said? He was a deceiver. He was a supplanter. But he's got the blessing because God had already prophesied how it's going to happen. And God cannot go back on his word. I know there was some conniving going on. And I know that Jacob suffered down through the years for what he had done. But you must remember the law had not yet been given. When the law was given was when it really became troublesome when you broke the law. But they were living by conscience. Of course, it doesn't excuse what Rebecca did and what Jacob did. But Jacob is leaving. I'm going to bless you as the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth. You're going to have plenty of corn and wine. And I'll curse him that curses you and bless him that blesses you. Esau comes running in. He's got the venison. Everything's prepared. He's expecting to receive the blessing. And so he comes in. And he finds out when he comes in, he says, Father, arise. He said, this is your son Esau. I've got the blessing. I've got the meat here and you can eat and you can bless me. Jacob said, who? Where is he that came in? He said, he's already come in. I've already eaten of his venison and I blessed him and he is going to be blessed. The Bible said when Esau heard these words, he cried with a great and exceeding bitter cry. He said, bless me, even me also, O oh my father. And his father said, thy brother came and with subtlety hath taken away thy blessing. Esau says to his father, is not he rightly named Jacob? And he supplanted me these two times. He took away my birthright and now he's took away my blessing. Those two things he's done unto me. Took my birthright and took away my blessing. Esau is so disappointed, but you gotta look back. You gotta look back to what happened when they were first born and what God said. Isaac answered Esau and said, I've made him Lord and said, I have given him, uh, your brethren to be servants unto him and I have sustained him with corn and wine. And Esau said, don't you just have just one blessing for me? I just want one blessing. And Isaac says unto him, behold, thy dwelling shall be with the fatness of the earth and of the dew of heaven from above. And by thy sword shalt thou live and shalt serve thy brother. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt have dominion that thou shalt break his yoke from off of thy neck when you have dominion. Esau's mad now. He doesn't like what's happened. He doesn't like what's going on. And he says he's going to mourn because of time for his father. The morning has come to pass to mourn for Isaac. But when the morning is over, I'm going to kill 
Esau. Rebecca found out about it. That I'm going to kill Jacob. Excuse me. I'm going to kill Jacob. Rebecca found out about it. Told Jacob, you go into the land of Padanaram. Under my father's house and my brother. And you stay there just a little while. Until his wrath is abated. And then you can come back. He lasted there for 20 years. Jacob was with Laban and in the house there for 20 years. Gone to Padanaram. And that was a long time. But he finally came back home after that. But I want us to look at this great downfall. I want to give you the reasons for Esau's downfall. Just because you get saved, just because you have a promise, just because God wants you to go to heaven doesn't mean you're going there. You're only going to go to heaven because you keep the laws of God and you do what's right. If you don't stand true unto the end and persevere to the end, you can lose out, you can miss God. You can't afford to let the devil trick you and get a mentality that's wrong. Your spirit must be right. Your mind must be right. Your commitment must be there and stay true to God until the breath leaves your body and then he's going to welcome you into the city because you were faithful unto God. His fall was great because he lost so much. When you lose heaven, you're going to lose a whole lot. But you're not just going to lose heaven, you're going to gain hell. There's only one or two places you're going. You're either going to go to heaven or you're going to go to hell. It's up to you. It's what you do that makes the difference. It's the decision you make that will mean the difference in your life. The Bible said in Joel 3 and 14, multitudes, multitudes in the valley that season for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. People are making decisions every day. There was a man that went to a farmer and the farmer hired him as a hired servant and he told him, I want you to paint my barn. It'll take you three years to paint it. And but it didn't take him, or three days, excuse me, to take you three days to paint it and it only took him a day. He said, I want you to cut that wood over there to take you four days. It only took him a day and a half. And then he took him to a pile of potatoes. He said, I want you to separate these potatoes into three different groups. I want you to separate the seed potatoes and those for the hogs and those that to sell. And he said, it won't take you long to do that. He told him it would take you three days to paint the barn and four days to cut the wood. And he was such a good worker, he got it done quick. So he says, it won't take you long to do that. At the end of the day, he came and the man was piddling around and couldn't hardly do nothing. He said, I can work hard, but I just can't make decisions. He didn't know where to put the seed potatoes, and he didn't know the difference in the bad potatoes that go to the hots or the potatoes to go for sale. He couldn't make his decisions. Listen, there's people cannot make decisions, but you are a person of decisions. You're going to have to decide who are you going to serve. Esau had to make a decision when he faced Jacob that day, but he made the wrong decision. Oh my God, there's people sitting on church pews. They're just like Esau. They think they're going, but they don't know they're going. This is a no-so salvation. You must know without a doubt tonight that your blood, that you've been covered by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and his blood is upon you. You must know that. It's a great fall. Because of what he lost, there's not going to be another chance. You fat, you you come through this world at one time, and that's it. When breath leaves your body, you won't get another bat. A ball player, a bat three or four times during a ball game. If it's a long ball game, maybe five or six times, he might strike out the first time, and he'll hit a home run the second time. But you only get one time at bat. You're at bat through this life and when it's over, you've either succeeded or you've failed. But the price is great. You'll either go to heaven or have said already or you'll go to hell. Esau made a terrible decision. The first reason that he had a downfall was simple. He failed to realize his position. He didn't hold his position in high esteem. 
We need to hold the position of God and the things of Calvary and of the Holy Ghost and the things of heaven. They're more precious to us than anything in this world. They're more precious than money, than silver or gold. We need to hold in high esteem the things of God. Esau did not hold the preciousness of the inheritance that he was going to receive. He was the firstborn. He was the heir to his father. But he sold it for so little. Genesis 25 and 34 said, Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils, and he did eat and drink and rose up and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. He despised it. He didn't even realize what he had done. He was so far away from God. He was so far away from truth until he didn't realize what he had sold. People are blinded by this world. They're blinded by sin. They're blinded by the devil. And pleasure has gotten a hold of this society. And they can't even see how important heaven is. They can't see how important death is when you come down to the end and you're going to leave this world. It's going to be worth it all to be able to say I fought a good fight. I've kept the faith. i finished my course. I'm going to die right. I've lived right. And I'm going to die right. You must not allow yourself to lose vision of heaven and what it is. And certainly, you must not allow yourself to lose the vision of hell and what it is. When it's all said and done, that's it. No more opportunities. If we're not careful, we'll fail to realize the position of our high calling And we'll sell out cheaply to the devil. Look what Esau sold out for. For a bowl of soup. Oh, there's preachers that'll get in sin. Commit adultery with somebody in the congregation or somebody else. Maybe a leader in the church. Do wrong. I know of a preacher did that and somebody was telling me about it. And he committed adultery and he moved on down and took most of the church with him when he had done wrong and never owned up to his wrong, never took any penalty, never was disciplined in any way, not understanding the terrible tragedy of his downfall. Oh, if we lose God, we've not only lost our soul, we've lost the, the, the evidence of God's power in our lives, And we've lost the the principle of God and his testimony that God's given. And we've done ill to God. We've heard his cause. Esau heard God because God was going to give him that inheritance. It belonged to him, but he couldn't understand it. He didn't esteem it high enough. Ephesians 4 and 1, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you're called. With all loneliness of meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. We have a great inheritance. Heaven holds all to me. If I would gain the whole world and lose my soul, what would it profit me? Or what would a man give in exchange for his soul? I want to get that inheritance. 1 Peter 1, 3 through 6, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith and the salvation ready to be revealed in the last time wherein you greatly rejoice though now for a season if need be you are in heaviness through manifold temptations wherein ye greatly rejoice why do we sing the songs there's a reservation in heaven there's a crown of glory that's laid up for us we're gonna suffer here but there's coming a coronation day there's coming a day when and we're going to reap. Man doesn't know it. Man doesn't know everything about you. But God writes down every prayer. He sees every tear. He knows your broken heart. He knows every test. He knows every time you overcome the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. God knows about it. He's going to remember it. We must pay 
a great price if we have a great inheritance. The Bible said in Revelation 2 and 10, Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Everything will continue in a state of rest unless it is compelled to change by forces impressed upon it. You will never be anything until God forces you in an altar through conviction. He forces you with conviction to pray. He forces you to go to church with conviction. You don't go because he forces you, but God has to move upon you to get you to live right. You wouldn't have come to church if you live by the flesh. There's something more powerful that'll get you out of that dormant attitude and get you into the attitude of God where the Lord can bless you and help you the second reason for Esau's downfall he felt strongly that he couldn't lose his standing he lost his standing he didn't realize the great price he was paying to do what he did but he come to a position where he couldn't strongly stand because he felt strongly that he couldn't lose it as he, was, as he held his position in such low esteem, he found he couldn't lose it. Those people preach, once you're saved, you're always saved. You're only saved if you go on and do the work of God. You're not saved just because you went to an altar one time and got saved. You gotta live right every day. You gotta talk right every day. Your life must exemplify Jesus Christ. This once in grace, always in grace is a damnable doctrine. There's people that believe that once you're saved, the blood just continually cleanses you. You can sin, but automatically the blood cleanses you. That's false doctrine. You have gotta repent. You gotta turn. You gotta come back to God and do your first works. If you don't, you lose out. If you backslide, we may have Favors pointing our way, but we can lose it overnight. You can backslide before you get home, but because of the grace of God and because you hold God in high esteem and you don't take your position now for granted, I know I get up here and preach, but my God, I, I tell you this often, I, I get up here, but I, I know and I feel the awesome responsibility. I'm seeking God and I'm praying for the message that God would have me to preach and for the anointing to be upon me that I may stir up your pure mind and keep you on the line and keep you in touch where you'll not get loose and lose out with God. Esau took for granted his position. We can lose. 1 Corinthians 10 12 said, Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. Always remember there's a devil right around the corner. Always remember there's a trap a few steps ahead. Remember there's an enemy that's breathing down your neck. Remember things may not be right now. Right as you get out of this church, it may fall apart on you. You're, go you're gonna be tested. It's not gonna be hunky-dory. Everything's not gonna be smooth like butter. You're gonna be tested and you're gonna be tried, but you'll make it because your mind's made up and you, es you esteem the inheritance great. You don't take for granted your stand. You know that you can fall. You know you can miss God. You walk softly before the Lord and the Lord helps you through the valleys and the trials that you face many of you are facing trials 2 Peter 2 20 through 24 said for if after they escape the pollution of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ they're again entangled there and overcome the latter end is worse for them than the beginning for it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them but it's happened to them according to the true proverb the dog has turned his own vomit again and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. They say, well, you can't backslide. You can't lose it. If you get saved, once you're saved, you're always saved. That's not what the Bible said. 
Only as you retain the knowledge of God, only as you follow him. In fact, God said in one name, if they overcome, if they do my will, I'll not blot their name out of my book. There's going to be people in hell that used to run the aisles and shout and praise God. There's going to be preachers in hell that preached under the anointing of the Holy Ghost and were used of God, but they didn't esteem the inheritance great enough and they took for granted that they could live this thing in their self. I'm telling you, every day that I I live every moment of that day I'm depending on God I don't know where the devil is I don't know what he's going to do I don't know his tricks I don't know his tactics but I know one who does know and I committed myself into the hands of God that God will help me St. John 15 1 and 2 said I am the vine and my father is the husband every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away every branch that beareth fruit. He purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. He said, if you're not bearing fruit, he's going to take you away. And we'll read that in that same 15th chapter of St. John. And what do they do? They burn them in the fire. People that don't persevere. People that are like Esau. God call him a profane person. Because of his attitude, they'll not make it. The third reason for Esau's downfall, he, un, he, under, he underestimated his bargain with Jacob. As I've told you already, he thought, well, it don't matter what I do. I'm heir. I'm the firstborn. I'm going to make it. You better not suppose anything when it comes to God. Whoa. You better make your calling and your election sure. Jacob meant business when he bargained for that birthright. Satan means business when he's bargaining for your soul. He wants to take you to hell. He knows he's doomed. He knows there's no hope for him. He sinned against God. He's going to be cast in the lake of fire and burn forever and ever. And he wants to take everybody to hell with him. He wants to influence you. He doesn't play games. He's out to get your birthright. He wants to take you. Jacob collected on that birthright. He took it. He wasn't worried about Esau. Except when Esau got mad and said I'm going to kill him. 20 years passes. God said that the elder would be mad at Jacob and rule him. But when the, when the yoke is broken. Everything will be fine. There will be a coming together. And there was later on. Esau and Jacob came together. Many, many years had passed. But Jacob collected on that birthright. Don't let Satan collect on you. Don't let him get what God gave unto you. You hold on to it. My God, I've been in this a long time. And it gets sweeter every day. The nearer I live, the more I live for God, the nearer to the shore of heaven I get. I can hear the melodious singing on the other side. I can see and, and understand the saints of God that have gone on before me. It won't be long until we're going to hear him. He is coming soon. My God, help me to understand it. The fourth reason for Esau's downfall, he expected the blessing even though he had sold it. When you do wrong, don't expect to be blessed. You'll reap exactly what you sow. In Galatians 6, 7 through 9 said, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. He that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. He that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. Be not uh, we're in well doing for in due season you shall reap if you faint not you're gonna reap you may not reap it now it took Jacob 20 years after he had left home to get back he suffered a lot of things he went down to the land of Padanaram to get him a wife and when he got there he met Rachel she was the love of his life he told Laban, he said, I'll work for her seven years to get her. Well, when he did, his years were accomplished, and he was supposed to get Rachel, but he got Leah. Leah wasn't a very good-looking woman. The Bible says she tendered eyed, and when Jacob finally woke up and understood it was Leah, he said, oh, my goodness, what have I got? <laughs> 
Come on now. Boy, he was in love with Rachel. And the Bible said that Laban bargained with him again. He was really trying to get the most out of Jacob he could get out of him. He talked to him again, said, well, you work more and you can have Rachel. I'll give them both to you. I don't think he cared too much about carrying Leah back. But he wanted Rachel. He said, I'll work seven more years. And the Bible said it seemed to him as nothing. I want to tell you something. If you love God, trials seem to you as nothing. They don't work. Work matakanda. They don't. They don't worry you one bit. You know why? Trials are for your making. Trials is what matures you. Trials is what gives you faith. Trials is what causes you to persevere. Heaven is going to be for those that have been tried. They overcome by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony. Jacob was tried. He worked for seven years. That's 14 years since he left home. He ended up six more years. Finally, God said, you go return to Bethel. Because on the way to Padanaram, he went to Bethel and he saw the angels of God. He saw that ladder. And the angels of God ascended and descended on that ladder. And God spoke to him and said, I'm going with you wherever you go. And I'm bringing you back to this place. I'll not leave you until I've done that which I've told you. And Jacob said to God, said, if you'll give me bread to eat and raiment to put on and bring me back to my father's house in peace, this will be God's house. He anointed a pillar. He said, this will be God's house and I'll give tithes of all that I possess. God kept his word. Jacob is entangled there in Laban's house for 20 years. Finally, God said, go back to Bethel. Him and Laban were getting in fights over the cattle and over their possessions. And God told Jacob, you ain't got no business sitting over here arguing with Laban. This is not your land. You go back to where you belong. You get to Bethel. You get back to your father's house and your kindred. And if you study Jacob's life, he was one of the greatest patriarchs in the word of God. He had the, the 12 tribes of Israel to come out of him and his family. The Jewish nation was founded on uh, Jacob and Isaac and Abraham. What a wonderful thing it was, brother. I want to tell you, God took care of him. But we need to understand, we'll suffer for what we do. Colossians 3 and 25. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done. And there is no respect of persons. Donald Trump is a wealthy man. I mean he's wealthy. He's running for president. He may get it. I'd rather have him than the other party by far. But he's really not my choice. Because he's so rich. He's had everything his way all of that time. Because money buys power. He's got that power. He may get voted in. He may be a good president. I don't know. Neither do you. But anyway, I'm trying to use an illustration here. He's got power. He says anything he wants to say. He don't have to have any lobbyists coming and supporting him. He don't need their money. He's got all the money. He's upset with uh, Washington, and there's a whole lot that's upset with Washington. Our system is broken. We're in a mess. I said we're in a mess when liars can lie and fornicators can fornicate and adulterers can adulterate or whatever you want to call it. I'm telling you now, it's a terrible time when there's no accountability. Man can do anything he wants to, but God's not going to let it happen. He's going to pull the brakes. He's going to pull it in the heart. God is going to take charge of what's happening in this world. And Jesus is going to arise with healing in his wings. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Aren't you glad for it? Aren't you glad for it? I'm so happy for it. I'm so happy that I know where I'm headed. When you have nothing left but God, you begin to learn that God is enough. If I don't have a dime... If he's my father and Jesus is my savior, he owns a cattle on a thousand hills. <laughs> he said, I've not seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. His last reason for his downfall, he repented, but he waited too late. The scripture said in Hebrews 12, 17, for ye know how the effort when he would have inherited the blessing he was rejected for he found no place of repentance though he sought it carefully with tears. He could not get back in. It was doomsday. He went too far. 
A man can backslide today and there's a possibility God will bring him back because we live under grace. But Esau had no way back in. He had to live with that terrible tragedy all of his life. Genesis 27, 34. And when Esau heard the words of his father, he cried with a great and exceeding bitter cry and said unto his father, Bless me, even me also, O my father. He accused Jacob two things. And I told him I want to reiterate it. He took my birthright and now he's taking my blessing. The birthright and the blessing were together. You can't sell the birthright and get the blessing. You can't get heaven if you're not born again. You can't get heaven if you don't know Jesus Christ. Preach a funeral the other day, Brother Kuykendall. I was with him. I talked to him. I prayed with him. He had God. He was born again. You must be born again. You can't get in without it. I don't care how high you are in the church, how high you are in society and the accomplishments you have, how much money you make. You can be a pauper, but if you're born of the Spirit and your name's written down in heaven, you're a rich man. I don't have a lot in this world. God's blessed me with a little, but I've got a lot laid up in heaven. (laughs) I said, I've got a lot laid up in heaven. You don't need to be like Esau. Take warning. Serve God day by day. That's why you pray every day. You know why you pray every day? So you can fix anything that you've done that you shouldn't do. So you can search your attitude and see if you've hurt anybody or have anything against anybody. So you can say, God... Have I kept your word? Have I sinned? If I have, reveal my sin and we'll fix it here and I'll not do it again. You can't be sinning every day and pray every day to get forgiveness. You're not saved. You can't be a sinner and have the Holy Ghost. You can't be a sinner and be born again. Man, I feel it now. I'm telling you, we got doctrines going around this world, all kinds of false doctrines. Had a man that used to attend this church here, and I met him not too long ago, and he's got a radio broadcast. I wouldn't name his name, but uh, he tried to tell me, once you're saved, your blood of Jesus Christ is applied. It don't make no difference how much you sin. That blood's applied, and you can go on, and you go to heaven. I said, no, sir. If you die with sin in your life, you're going to hell. I don't care if you cast out devils at one time. I don't care if you run the pews. I don't care if you stand on your head and turn somersaults or run through the wall. If you backslide and you die in a backslid condition, you're going to hell. And that doctrine's being propagated. It's making people have a false uh, understanding of God and His cause, and they're going to miss heaven. But I pray to keep myself in line. I read the word and believe me, I walk the line because you're mine. I'm talking about Jesus. I walk the line. Amen. Man got married and him and his wife said, we're going to agree now. I'll make all the major decisions and you can make all the minor decisions. 20 years later, somebody asked him, did it work out? He said, I never did get to make any major decisions. She made them all. (laughs) You're going to have to make your own decisions. If my brother don't make it, I've got a twin brother and I love him and I'm praying for him. He called me the other day and said he felt weak. He's been diagnosed with leukemia. The doctors say it's not anything to worry about, but I don't know if it is or not. But I can't answer for him. I've had disagreements with him. I love him, but I will not compromise with him. He's my twin brother. I'll not compromise with my children. I won't compromise with the leaders of our church. I won't compromise with worldly churches because I made a commitment and I made my mind up many years ago. I'm going through. I'm going to hear him say, well done. Everybody stand, if you will, please. Congratulations to this couple here. They got married. Amen. Praise the Lord. Greatest thing you could have done. Now the next time you need to do, you got saved, you need to be baptized in water. They're coming to church. She came to church the first time and she was a shouting. Why? She felt something. 
Well, you can't hardly keep people from shouting if they feel it. Amen. I feel it, Brother Tim. Mashanda. Come here. I want us to pray for Brother Tim. He's, he's in a, a valley of decision. I want God to help him to make the decision that God wants. Amen. I mean that. I love this man. I love him dearly. But if God wants to do something different with him, I'm, I'm giving it up. I love him. I'm going to pray for you right now. Father, under the Holy Ghost, I lay him at the altar and he's done it too. Don't let him make one step out of your will. But let every step from here out till he leaves this world be in the perfect will of God for him and his family. In Jesus' name. And everybody say praise the Lord. That prayer is going to be answered. That prayer is going to be answered. I want you to find your way in an altar here tonight and I want you to search your heart. And I want you to pray and I want you to talk to God like this will be the last prayer you'll ever pray. Come on now. Woo! <laughs> Here's a good Baptist man got the Holy Ghost, brother. He's a good one. You're a good one. You're a Presbyterian. <laughs> I heard a preacher preach last night one of the greatest messages. He was a Roman Catholic. God loves us all. He don't care what you were. He's interested in what you are now. Bless my brother God. Anoint him in the Holy Ghost. I appreciate him. I appreciate him, Lord. I appreciate his precious wife. I appreciate this man, God. Oh, Lord, help him tonight. Touch Brother Ronnie, God. Lost his mama. God, help him now in the name of Jesus. Help Brother Ronnie, God. He's a Bible man. He loves God. Hold that. He loves God. He loves the Holy Ghost in a wheelchair and he's more faithful than a lot of people got two good legs thank God for you brother Ronnie thank God for you church thank God for all of you God bless you brother bless these in this altar my God touch them tonight he cut out Messiah God's going to help you God's going to help you God's going to help you God's with you the Lord's touching you the Lord's touching you Shut up, ba 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 Touch him, God. Thank God. He says he's doing better. He's going to be healed. I'm not doubting it. I'm believing it. I'm standing on the promise of God. Come da 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 da. Shut da 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 da. Woo! Hell of a shut up, my. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you from my brother, God. Thank you from my sister. Thank you from my brother. Thank you from my brother. Heal his body. Shut da 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 my. Thank you from my brother and sister God. Touch him here tonight. Touch him, God. Touch him, God. Touch him, Father. Every one of them in the Messiah. In Jesus' name. Touch him, God. Touch him, God. Woo! <laughs> Woo! Thank you for my brother God. Thank you for my sister God. Thank you for Sister Betty God. She's been a good woman all these years. She served here, God, been faithful to you. This man's been faithful. He's going to get a big reward. He's not a preacher, but he's done a lot of great work for God. Amen. It's not always seen. Our works are not always seen by man, but God writes them all down. God's going to give some layman more works and blessings than some preachers. I'm going to tell you that. You may see the preacher don't even know what the layman's doing, but God's writing it all down. He's writing down your faith. He's writing down every time you overcome the devil. He's writing down every time you witness to his name and tell of his glorious power. God is writing it down. He's keeping a record of you. In heaven, he's keeping a record of you. Thank you, Father. Raise your hands and praise him, church. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Raise your hands and praise Him. Thank you, Lord. I want to tell you something before I let you go home tonight. You will not be blinded. You will not be deceived. You will know truth. And you'll walk in it. Because you love God. I want to thank you for coming to hear me preach. 
you could be home, weather's bad, but you came to church. I want to thank you for your faithfulness. I love you. I've been running my shoe heels off. I'm telling you, I've, I've been seeing people, going to see people. I want to tell you something else, and we're going to let you go. I'm not going to labor on. We're going to see some people healed. We're not going to throw in the towel. We don't have to throw in the towel. Our God said he'll heal our sick folks. Come on now. We've already seen a couple of them. God answered. Sister Hilburn could have died. She was on death row. I said she was on death row. When the doctor put her in that room there, he told the family she may die. Said, I know one other woman that took this medicine and she died. We couldn't pull her out of it. You know the difference? I don't know that other woman. Maybe she's a Christian, but if she wasn't, the difference was when this was happening, they've got a church that was praying. I don't have to be the one that gets the answer through. I don't care who it is. Praise God. Woo! As long as we get an answer. We get an answer. I said, we get an answer. Shake hands and love somebody and say, I'm going home with victory. God bless you. Remember Saturday, you that have signed up. Come Sunday morning expecting a great time in the Lord. Get to pray and seek and God. Let's believe that God's going to heal these folks. Brother Insco said he's feeling a lot better. He's going to get healed. Fast calendar. If you need to fast, I'm, I've got Thursday on mine. So, you need to fast. I had